everyone. Welcome to the Miami Marketers Podcast. We are fortunate today to have with us Dan Gretsch, uh, founder and CEO of Big, uh, Biz Hack Academy. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Francisco. It's great to be here. And uh, really excited to have you with us today. Today, we're talking about the five pillars of digital success for small businesses. Before we get into the topic, um, obviously, you had an incredible career, some great experiences. So tell us a little about that, about you, your career path. Where do you get started and how do you get here to where you are today? Absolutely. You know, I, I did not have the typical uh, marketer's career path, if there is such a thing. I actually spent the first 20 years of my career as a journalist. I worked at the Miami Herald, the Washington Post, and then in broadcast at NPR and PBS. I was part of a Pulitzer Prize. Uh, I studied journalism in Argentina with a Fulbright. Uh, I won big awards as news director of the NPR's, uh, the NPR station here in Miami. And honestly, if the journalism industry hadn't had uh, such a difficult time and so many jobs were lost, I would still be a journalist. But about 10 years ago, I lost my job at NPR and I had to reinvent. And I thought to myself, what do I want to do next? And I said, well, I'm a great storyteller. I even have a master's degree in storytelling. Why don't I apply that in the business world? So I want to, I want to tell business stories and I want to do it online, right? Because online is, is where things are at. So I want to tell business stories online. And I remember I was, I mean, I was so clueless back then. Like I was asking people, okay, I want to tell business stories online. What is that? And they're like, that's digital marketing. And I'm like, that, that's what I want to know. I want to learn digital marketing. Anyway, what did I do? I Googled it, right? So like, what is digital marketing? And oh my God, I remember going down this rabbit hole of YouTube videos, trying to like figure out what the heck digital marketing is and where to start. And honestly, I felt like a spelunker in a cave with, with a headlamp, sort of looking around, trying to figure out like, how big was this cave? Where was I? Was it safe? What was I doing? And what I found is that it was actually impossible to get a sense of how large the cave is and what I needed to know. And I just needed someone to turn on the lights. And so I started looking around for a course and courses. And I took Udemy courses and LinkedIn Learning and Linda courses. And it was weird. Like, the more I learned, the less I knew. It was, it was very confusing. Uh, and a lot of the courses were really just masquerading as marketing. So they were trying to sell a software solution or they were trying to, you know, get me to hire their agency. So what we call now in the business educational marketing, uh, it wasn't learning. It was about converting me into a customer. And I just wanted a school. I wanted to like just sit down and take a course. So I figured there must be just like there are boot camps in coding. There must be boot camps in digital marketing. And back in 2013, when all this was going down, there wasn't such a thing. So anyway, over the next five years, I spent like really struggling to learn this stuff. And, you know, I'm a smart guy. I went to Princeton and honestly, I've never tried to learn anything harder than this. And finally, after learning it and doing it for a couple of different companies, when I had an opportunity to start my own business, I was inspired to help other professionals like me who've really struggled with this stuff learn it. And that's really what BizHack Academy is all about. Wow, that's an incredible story. I think, you know, um, from you know, something you mentioned, reinventing yourself, which um, I think a lot of our audience can relate to from, you know, experiencing downturns in, in, in different industries. And then something that I admire a lot, what you said is your um, willingness and passion to self learn yourself and develop something and give something back to people that maybe didn't have the option. Um, well, one thing I'll say about this is self-learning is awesome, but self-learning can be really inefficient. And so part of what I learned in learning this myself is how, how many false starts and how much I would have benefited from a guide and that's really the inspiration of what BizHack Academy does is if you're not sure where to start, start with us. Um, once you're started and you're on the digital marketing treadmill, you, you know, there's so much to learn and depending on your business and your profession, different areas to focus on. But the where to start question is really a tough one in digital marketing and we solve for that. And then Dan, with all your experience and everything, um, 
how would you guide, because um, obviously one of the things that I um, really admire what you do is you work with small businesses, you know, the, the, where you really have to go and demonstrate results right away. Um, so what advice, how would you guide uh, small businesses when their first interest that they say, you know, I'm a business owner, I have no idea of digital marketing, please help me. Yeah. Well, you know, first of all, I want to say small businesses chose me rather than me choosing them. What I mean to say is when I started teaching this, I ta I, and I've taught more than 10,000 businesses in the past year, and that includes Fortune 500 companies all the way down to startups. And what's happened is I've fallen in love with micro enterprises, with small business owners, the lifeblood of our economy, more than 50% of our economy and 70% of our employment. And the reason I've fallen in love with them is because like at your best with a Fortune 500 company, you might make one executive look better for their annual bonus. With a small business, you can change a life. You can turn around a business. You can save a business. And I just have I've become like addicted, to be honest, with the experience of being a teacher and seeing in real time my students' lives change. And I'm not even kidding. Like, you know, I teach five-week accelerated courses where my average participant makes $29 in incremental sales for every dollar they spend in advertising while in the course. I've had folks make $100,000 and close deals in five weeks and, and their lives are utterly transformed. I, I, one of my favorite stories is Megan Hill. She was a lawyer who took some time off to raise four children and when she came back, the legal profession didn't want her. She was being offered paralegal positions and she was a magna cum laude from law school. So she said, screw Lee law, I'm gonna become a book editor, but I don't have a website, I don't have social media, I don't know where to start. She started with us and in literally five weeks, spent $430 on ads. They were like brilliantly executed, perfect targeting, great offer, really compelling visual. Anyway, she closed seven deals worth $105,000 and booked herself for an entire year in five weeks after not having had a website when she started. And like, you cannot do that when you're dealing with, you know, 50 billion dollar companies, it, it, the, the kind of impact you can have. But to answer your specific question, which is what advice about where to start when you're a small business? My advice is start with your personal business story. So one of the big things that you're challenged by when you're a startup or a small enterprise is how do you differentiate yourself from the competition? Inevitably, you're going to have very well healed competitors who have a lot more money and brand recognition. So how do you compete? The only way to compete is you, is your personal story. I guarantee you there is no other digital marketing trainer out there with my story. No other Pulitzer Prize winner, no other 15 year journalist, no other masters in storytelling. And so if I just tell my story, and I tell it in a vulnerable and authentic way, I immediately differentiate myself and I create a product or a service that people wanna get behind. Start your marketing, your communications there with your business story, and then communicate it through every channel, online and traditional that you can. Uh, and that's incredibly inspiring, inspiring in, in so many senses and it just brings you back to results. And I think you're delivering results from the get-go and a small business owner doesn't have the budget to, you know, do a lot of tests. So they're going to be expecting results from you. And the fact that you've, you know, done it for, for so long and, and helped so many businesses in that aspect, you know, in, in, in Miami area, internationally, everything, it, it just speaks a lot about your passion, what you're doing. And wanted to ask you in those, um, because COVID kind of like shifted the entire industry, world, everything, how have you had to adapt? Has it, has it changed? What, ha what role has COVID played in your business, your life and everything uh, in the recent months? You know, like so many small businesses, I was nearly put out of business by COVID. At the start of 2020, 
all of BizHack's courses were in person. And we had been preparing for a day when we would be moving online, but it was scheduled for the last half of 2020. So we were still months away from making that switch. In March, when COVID took hold, we immediately converted our in-person class to online, to Zoom. But the problem that we had was the next class, the one that was scheduled for April and all the other offerings that we had. And what ended up happening is we had to cancel all of our in-person classes, which meant canceling revenue that we were expecting and counting on, rebuild from the ground up the 12 week in-person course into a five week online course and then market and sell that to a different audience. And that process of making that transition, we nearly ran out of money. It was scary as hell. I was up in the earliest parts of the night. Anyone who's ever run a business and not been sure that they could make the next month's payroll knows exactly what I'm feeling. You know, I was burning through cash because my, you know, one of the commitments I made to my team is no one was going to get let go. We were going to transition and do this together but I was burning through their cash. All my corporates pushed off their spend or delayed their, you know, delayed spending. Cause for them, it's just, you know, 60 day versus 120 day doesn't matter to them. It matters a heck of a lot to me. And honestly, we've, we applied for all the federal funding and support and none of it came in on time. Uh, we finally did get a PPP. Uh, we did, we did get an EIDL loan from the SBA, but all of it came after we turned it around on our own through revenue. So we, it, this all happened in May of 2020. At the start of the month, I had, I didn't have enough money to make payroll at the end of the month. And by the end of the month, I had enough money in the bank to make payroll. And just this past month, we created a three month reserve emergency fund with enough operating expenses to have zero revenue and still be able to operate at full capacity for three months. And our goal is by the end of this year to have a six month reserve because the uncertainty is so terrible. And honestly, living through not having enough money and not being sure I was gonna be able to make payroll for my team, I never wanna have that happen to me again. So we turned it around, we turned on the online courses, they've been selling amazingly. And this last cohort, we had seven international students from five different countries. Wow. Oh, man, that, what, what an incredible story. Again, um, I think a lot of people listening to the podcast are going to relate to this. Um, it, it, I think it takes a special breed of person to um, actually own a business, run a business. Uh, it's a roller coaster. Um, so to people listening to this and running their businesses or opening a business, wanting to own a business, what advice would you give them if they're thinking, you know, it's, it's time to hang the boots? And, uh, kids, you have those thoughts, they run through you. Yeah. Um, what would you tell people to motivate them or, or, or suggest them once they run a business? You know, I'm on the front lines of COVID and its impact on small business. I've had about 500 conversations with individual small business owners as part of the work I've done since March. And one of the messages that I tell people is are you doing what you love? Because the bottom line is there ain't a lot of, we're in a depression and there ain't a lot of money to go around, right? And so if you're gonna do work now, do what you love, do what you love. So what I'm seeing actually, in, and it's very inspiring, is a lot of business owners are brushing off business plans that they've held off on because they just didn't have the time and a lot of people are now beginning to pursue what they love. And let me tell you a story about this. I was speaking to a woman who has a business selling preserved roses. And I was like, what is a preserved rose? And she said, let me tell you about my life story. She's like, I had cancer at age 40 and I was going to die. And I was in the hospital on life support and my friends and family were sending me roses. 
And I didn't like the idea of these roses dying at my bedside as I was dying. And so I began to study the art of preserving roses, live roses, so that they can last for years rather than days. She, while on her deathbed, perfected this process. And in the process of learning how to preserve roses, her cancer went away. Wow. And she now runs an e-commerce business selling preserved roses to cancer patients. It's like, holy cow, man. Like, first of all, what a story. Second, I'll buy me some of those roses. You know, like I want some of that good juju. It's just amazing. And if you tell that story and you tell people like, I'm a small business, I'm struggling, you know, help me and I will help you, you know, have these roses and my story become a part of your life. Give this to your COVID sick or your cancer sick friend or, pa or a family member. Amazing. So like my mission now, like I'm on board. My mission now is to make sure her story is heard by as many people as possible. And the way I'm going to do that is she's going to run through our course. She'll have a scholarship to do it. And she's, I hope, going to make a ton of money and change a lot of people's lives. You know, what I told her when I was talking to her about the course is I'm like, look, this is your mission. And she's very religious. So her, it's her mission as a business, but it's also her mission as a Catholic. I said, but if you're preaching to an empty pulpit, right, if there's no one in the audience to hear your sermon, what impact could you possibly have? Like, your mission is roses, but you need to get them out there, and I can help you with that. And it's like the honor of a lifetime to be working with microenterprises like this on efforts like that. Incredibly. And I think it goes back to what you mentioned, that you're changing lives, you're impacting people at the ground level, at where it really matters. And I couldn't say, again, how inspiring it is to to hear everything you're doing and, and, the, and the great story. So, and then let's go a little bit back into, into our theme. So tell us a little bit about this five pillars of digital success for most business. What are they and how can we make the most out of them? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we've had is how do you teach someone with no money and no time how to market themselves? And the core, the, we call it the, the communications diamond, the, the hard center of all of your marketing is your business story. And we talked about that. But obviously that's not enough. That's just where you start. You start with your business story. That's the foundation of your marketing. So what are the pillars? How do you actually build up a marketing uh, effort from that? And the five pillars of digital marketing are as follows. Your campaign objective, your target audience, your irresistible offer, your thumb stopping video, right? If you're scrolling and you stop on a video, that's thumb stopping. That's a Facebook term. And then finally, a compelling message. So again, it's your campaign objective. What are you trying, what action are you trying to get your target customer to take? Is it to visit your website? Is it to give you their email address in a form? Is it to watch your video, right? That's called your campaign objective. And that's inside of Facebook or Google or TikTok, whatever advertising platform, you have to be really specific about what action you want them to take. That's the objective. And it all starts there because these platforms use artificial intelligence and machine learning to optimize for that outcome. So you'll get different results if you pick a traffic outcome where you're trying to get them to a website or a video views outcome where you're trying, uh, out, out objective where you're trying to get them to watch your video. Next is target audience. Key here is to think about your ideal customer. Too many of us, especially when we're small, will take money wherever we get it. The whole point of advertising online or any marketing campaign is to get in front of your ideal customer, right? The customer you love to serve and who get amazing value out of you. Otherwise, why, why bother? Why would you market to anyone else? So you're marketing to your ideal customer and then how to find that ideal customer online is not simple at all. And it takes a lot of trial and error and it takes a little bit of training and knowledge as well. Um, one of my favorite examples of this is let's imagine you're a sock company, you sell socks and your ideal customer is someone with holes in their sock. I totally get it, right? Like, of course, someone with holes in their sock is in the market to buy socks. 
but how are you going to find that person online, right? Because they don't join chat groups uh, on Facebook for people with holes in socks. And there's like no LinkedIn interest target around people with holes in socks. It's not something people advertise, right? But it is a good, your ideal customer. So you have to find proxies for those qualities. A, good, a really good example is I talked earlier about Megan Davis, uh, Megan Hill, the book editor. She wanted to find aspiring writers. Well, there is no t interest category in Facebook called aspiring writer. However, there are ways to find avid readers. They love the New Yorker. They love Goodreads. And the type of person who is an avid reader is very likely an aspiring writer. So like it's, it's a magic trick. There's an incredible free tool in Facebook Business Manager called Audience Insights. Highly recommend it. There are also great Google tools like Google Trends and Google Keyword Planner, which are also amazing and free and give you tremendous insight for building a whole marketing plan, not just the digital marketing plan. Basically, Google and Facebook are giving you their data for free. Might as well take it. All right, next is irresistible offer. You gotta be, you gotta compel people to wanna give you their contact info. The irresistible offer for most ads needs to be free. So basically, a free irresistible offer is something so good that you'd have to be a fool to pass it up. And a really good free irresistible offer is one that someone would be willing to pay for, but you're gonna give them for free in exchange for their contact info, email and phone. All right, so the free irresistible offer and the audience, that's the core of every campaign. And then finally, how do you create something that's gonna get people to actually react? You need to create a thumb stopping video, a compelling video and a message that really presents it in a way that'll get people to click on that button and want to follow up with you. And the last thing I'll just say is, when you're a small business, we do not recommend you pay for high quality video at first. We recommend you create your own videos using Facebook's free video creation tool. It's embedded inside of Facebook's business manager. It's called Creative Hub. And you can build your own video for free out of still images and a little bit of text. It takes 30 minutes and it's good enough for running your first ads. Yeah, no, again, and I think it's, it's great that you mentioned there's so many free resources that, you know, a small business can already go ahead and take advantage from Facebook, Google. I know both of them have made a lot of efforts uh, in the recent years to, you know, cater to this specific um, demographic in those senses. Uh, and it's, you know, again, really, really incredible what you're doing in, in equipping this business owners that might not have the expertise, like you said, the, the, the time or the, or the money in order to do this, but, but really make them, you know, be like a sharpshooter and go straight to the point. And then, then we're almost running out of time, but we'd love to hear, you know, you've had so much experience from uh, journalism to marketing, um, experiencing a layoff, uh, getting back on your feet, building a business, you know, just, just, you know, things that are, are take a lot of, a lot of anybody to do in a, in a lifetime. So it's just incredible. But looking back, uh, what advice would you give a younger, a younger version of yourself? <laughs> the first thing I would say is not to be so hard on yourself. Um, the entrepreneurial journey, the life journey is really bumpy. And things take a lot longer than you think. And if you're patient and you're persistent and you do things for the right reason, as well as if you set your sights on an ambitious goal and work steadily towards it, you will get there. Maybe not in quite the way you th thought, maybe not as fast as you wanted, but you will get there. Do the things for the right reasons. Don't despair at setbacks. Just wake up every day, go to the salt mines and keep chopping and you'll get there. Love it. And lastly, to wrap it up, uh, favorite quote. Oh gosh. <laughs> this is a little bit morbid, but what the hell. Um, one of my mentors said to me, okay, I was, I was weeks away from going out of business, right? And COVID is all around me. I have to remake my business. Um, I have no revenue. I have this, this whole 
I mean, I wasn't paying myself. I have this whole team of people relying on me for their livelihoods. And I was like, I was like an animal, man. I was so focused. I was just, I was like, there, I am not letting any of these folks down. They have, they've done so much for me to help me build my business to where I am. I'm going to, I'm going to turn this around. And I was tireless, you know, I would wake up like Doof! at 5 a.m. and I was on and I was, I would work until 2 a.m., go to bed, wake up again at 5 a.m. and off again. And I was talking to my mentor about this as I was like slowly turning around the business. And he said, Dan, nothing focuses the mind like the sight of the gallows. <laughs> nothing focuses the mind like the sight of the gallows. The, the fact that I was this close to death mm. of my business caused me to accelerate plans that I had had in the works for years, but hadn't taken off the shelf, hadn't gotten done. And so what that means to me is all of us are right now in a life and business threatening situation, right? COVID is a threat to our economy. It's a threat to our livelihoods. It's a, it's an, a huge uncertainty in our careers and in our family life. God forbid any of us get sick. Many of us already have use this as an opportunity to grasp what's possible focus on the opportunity there's one other quote i'll mention you know use this to motivate you to do what you haven't done before there's one other quote the the the, the uh, chinese this is attributed to john f kennedy uh there's a little bit of a mistranslation here but the idea is so powerful the chinese character for crisis is the combination of the words danger and opportunity. And all of us are very focused on the danger in this crisis. You can also equally focus on the opportunity and that's what I would encourage you to do, grasp the opportunity. Incredible, Dan, I wanna thank you again for an incredible time. Uh, love the conversation, the chat. Um, look forward to seeing everything you have to do yet uh, and follow your career in the next path. And, uh, looking forward to having you again sometime in the, in the podcast. Thank you so much. I'd be happy to come back. You know, thanks for all that you do, Francisco, to both train folks in Google and also as the head of Miami Marketing. The one thing I'll say is, you know, please follow us at BizHack Academy. We're on all our social media platforms. Uh, our YouTube channel, you can actually check out our weekly BizHack Live webinar series, free and open to the public and then bizhack.com if you're interested in learning more about our training. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Make sure everyone to follow that. Thank you. Bye now.